What's up everyone? It's Zero Exploit bringing you another video. I apologize I haven't been uploading anything lately. I've just been really busy with work. I'm working like 16 hours a day plus spending time with my son and studying. Right now I am studying for my OSCP certification and in the middle of studying for my CISP certification. But other than that, today's video is on Try Hack Me. Try Hack Me is a great website to learn about cybersecurity, pen testing, and ethical hacking. Basically, you have to perform tasks. Well, actually, Try Hack Me has these rooms, okay? And just like Hack the Box has boxes, Try Hack Me has rooms. Now, each one of these rooms has various topics that will help you discover information on cybersecurity, ethical hacking, uh, pen testing, web application hacking, but most of it has to do with self-learning. And I don't want you guys to worry. There's a large amount of information on every topic, on every room, and it's available on the internet, okay? There might be a time you might hit a wall and, and get stuck and feel that you don't have enough information on a topic. That's where research comes into play. You got to do your homework. You got to do your research. It's a completely okay to be stuck at times. And when you get stuck, I suggest you use Google or any other search engine that you're familiar with to move past these obstacles. And it's very important that you learn to love to learn and use the information out there to enhance your knowledge and it's okay to look at various write-ups attached to each of these rooms to be able to understand how another user solved the problem. And I promise you this, whether if you're a script kitty, a new, or intermediate, or even advanced, as long as you keep on trying, eventually you're going to end up figuring it out. And the reward is going to be that beautiful thing. And by the time you're done, and you're ranking and you're ranking up your rank and you start to become more comfortable with Linux command line and how to use MF to scan infrastructures to probe for weaknesses or vulnerabilities and how to use Metasploit to enumerate, to exploit, and maintain persistence on a target and start to understand how the web works before attacking a website, things will get a lot more easier for you. You'll start, you'll start to understand things more. So other than that, I try hack me. Um, I didn't know about try hack me until a friend of mine told me to check it out. Now what you're looking at on the screen is a vulnerability, and we're going to attack this uh, room. Now before we start, something I like to get out there. Last night I was recording a video and uh, it was getting really late. I was actually doing a lot of studying and then decided to uh, make a video on vulnerability. So as I was making the video, um, it became like 3 o'clock in the morning and I fell asleep right at the damn desk on my laptop. And I guess I stopped the, the recording and it accidentally deleted the video, so so now I'm re-recording it. As you can see, I've already completed task one, task two, task three, but I don't want you guys to worry about it. We're gonna re-go through it. Um, let me see. I know when I say the um in my videos, it's really annoying for me. I try not to say. It's not really me doing it as a pause. It's me like thinking in my head at the same time. Okay, so as you can see, the only thing you do is each task tells you a particular thing to do. Um, so connect to your network. You hit complete. 
and then you do the reconnaissance, use an in-map, then it'll ask you a few questions. Okay, there are many in-map cheat sheets online that you can use too. You don't need to really answer it, just complete. And then it tells you to go ahead and scan the box. It tells you, asks you how many ports are open, what version is Squid Proxy is running, how many ports will in-map scan, if the flag tag P tag 400 was used, of course 400. Now using the in-map flag tag N, what will it not resolve? That's DNS. And what is the most likely operating system this machine is running? Ubuntu, what port is the web server running on? CC3, okay. And it's important to ensure you're always doing your reconnaissance thoroughly before progressing. Knowing all open services, which can all be pointed of points of exploitation. Okay, so what I wanna show you guys too is if there gets a time when you're doing a task and it's asking you a question and you really don't know where to look, sometimes it gives you a little hint. So you can click on these hints. Let's say IP to host name, that just that's a hint. Uh, run in map with the tag O flag. Okay, so other than that, before we start on Volunversity, I want to introduce you guys to the learning path. There will be times in the video where I'm going to pause the video just to save time. Like when I'm scanning or doing an in-map scan or any type of scanning that I know it's going to take some time. So I will be pausing the video just so we can shorten these videos a little bit. Now, the learning path, for those who are beginners who have no knowledge of cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or threat testing, web application hacking, I suggest you start on this. But before coming to try hacking, I think what you should do is go to this other website called pentesterlab.com. It teaches you the basics of web applications. But... Before you go to pentester.com, uh, not pentester.com, pentesterlab.com, come here to try hacking, get the subscription, which is like the pro version of try hacking. And if you use the, if you subscribe, it's like 10 bucks a month, really cheap. You can use these learning paths. And what I would suggest for you new people is to start with the complete beginner. Once you're completed all the rooms on here and you successfully completed that, I think you do get some sort of certificate of completion. Okay, then I would suggest you move on to web fundamentals right here. When you get to this part right here, I suggest you sign up for pentesterlab.com at the same time and do pentester lab and web fundamentals side by side. You'll get a lot more out of it, trust me. And then you can just work your way up doing these right here. Now, to be able to connect to the network after you have registered and subscribed to Try Hack Me, you just go to Access, you download your configuration file, and you use OpenVPN to connect to Try Hack Me's network. And it's very simple. As soon as you download your configuration file, you can just move on over to the terminal and the only thing you really need to do, for example, delete to my VPN, show you guys. As you can see, here's my configuration file data fraud zero it's supposed to say data fraud zero suck dot o v p n and the only thing you need to do is type in open vpn and then the name of your configuration file okay that's it and hit enter the moment it says initialization sequence completed then you are connected now understand when you go to your room, 
like right now this this whole profile right now is um a new profile for me i already have another profile and i've completed a lot of the other rooms but in order for me to you know show you try hack me i wanted to do a couple boxes and make a couple videos on these boxes or rooms sorry so used to hack the box <clears throat> so when you decide to pick a room now when you go to my rooms these are rooms that you've joined okay now, if you want to look for other rooms, you would go to Dashboard. And Dashboard will show you a couple other rooms. Okay. So the first thing you do is when you get to here, you got to deploy your machine. That's what Task Force is going to actually do. Hit the Deploy button. And then after a minute, maybe a couple seconds, this will pop up. As you can see, we got an IP address of 1010208232. This is about to expire in six minutes, so we need to add another hour. Okay, now understand if you're using the free version of Try Hack Me, it's gonna take a, a minute for these boxes to actually spawn. So what I suggest you do is highlight the IP address and then open up a terminal. Let's go ahead and go back to GTF, try hack me, and just type in ping and then the IP address and just do that. Now, the machine's already spawned on my end, but the first time you spawn a machine, it's going to take a little bit. So when you do the ping and then the IP, it's going to like hold. And then the moment you start seeing bits of, of data, Start to come, then you know that the machine's up and running. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this box. There's a lot more to this. If you try hack me, you got activities, you got King of the Hill, you got other teams, badges, documentations. Um, you can even spawn and open up your own. You can actually set up your own boxes on here, your own rooms. You know, if you want to teach people. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do this box. Let's show you guys. Actually, there is. All right, I'm going to go to dashboard real quick. I want to show you guys something. I want to show you what you get out of when you subscribe. All right, so... When you subscribe for $10, you get all this right here. You get access to all pro learning content. You get to be able to watch Try Hack Me video tutorials. You get to access your own private VIP server. You get your own virtual Kali machine on the browser. Okay. So for those who don't have uh, Kali Linux on your on a virtual machine or installed on your laptop or desktop if you subscribe to the try hack me you get your own Kali machine that's on the cloud okay you are able to enroll in all paths remember how I was showing you guys the learning paths so by subscribing you get to do these learning paths you get to play all cyber games which is fun actually and then your machines deploy faster which is awesome So when you scroll down, as you can see, you got all these other rooms. And then you can click on new rooms. And as you can see, you got more rooms. You got LFI, welcome to Try Hack Me. When you register and you get in, Try Hack Me, and you're all logged in, do this one first. Okay, and it'll give you a better understanding of Try Hack Me. Here's the videos right here. So, Hack Park, Hacking Windows with Hydra, RCE, and WinKeys. You got the Avengers blog. You got Learn Metasploits, Vulnerability, Action Recon Web Attack, Nmap, Exploding Windows, and Eternal Blue. 
And then if you scroll down here, you get your own Kelly machine. Let's go to Kelly room. Well, only way you can be able to see this right now is if you're subscribed. But other than that, Let's go ahead and do that box. All right, so as we can see, I've already done one, two, and three. As you can see, connect to our network and deploy this machine. Uh, that's completed. Reconnaissance, we will do this right now actually. So it's gonna show you how to use InMap properly. It gives you basic command lines. Okay, there are many InMap cheat sheets online that you can use. That's completed. And we'll go ahead and scan the box. So I've already done the scan. So I'm going to go ahead and do less scan and map. Actually, it's going to be mesh and map. I've already done the complete scan of it. And as you can see, I used in map, tag SC, tag SV, tag OA. And then I wanted to save it in the directory scan as init and then the IP address. Okay. As you can see, we got FTP, SSH. We got net files, SSN, Samba. We got 445, Samba. 3128, which is quid HTTP proxy. And then we have 3,333 Apache HTTP server. Okay, six total ports. So you just put six, click complete. And then actually what version of the squid proxy is running, go back. Three, five, 12 for the squid. How many ports, we already know, it's 400. Okay, we know that using tech and will not resolve DNS. We know that the box is Ubuntu, as you can see right here. And then we go ahead and locate directories using Go Buster. What is the directory that has an upload form image, which is initial is what I got. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to use Dirt Buster. Uh, not Dirt Buster, Go Buster, sorry. They're kind of similar. All right, so Go Buster is a tool used to brute force IRLs, directories, and files, DNS, subdomains, and virtual host names for this machine. We will focus on using it to brute force directories. You can download Go Buster by, if you're using a Kali machine, by typing in apt install Go Buster, or you can go to your GitHub repository and download it from there. <clears throat> now we need a few things. We need a word list and go buster. So sorry about that guys. I had a phone call in the middle of a video recording. So I had to answer it. It's one of my business partners. Okay, so <clears throat> we were doing ghost but go buster. I was about to say ghost butcher. Go buster, so we're going to type in Go Buster. Actually, while it's at, let me double check and make sure that we can still communicate with the machine. Because I was on that phone call for a while. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to type in Go Buster. DIR for directory, and then U for HTTP, and then the IP address, 10, 10, excuse me. 
208 232 on port 3333. And we need to specify a word for this. So we're going to do user share word this enter buster directory this 2.3 medium and go. Now I'm going to pause the video because this is going to take a little time. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. As you can see, we have a few directories right here for the website. We got images, CSS, JS, font, and internal. Now, as you can see right here, it's asking us, what is the directory that has an upload form page? Now, I already typed internal from excuse me, from when I did this earlier, last night when I was trying to record and, and I'm falling asleep. <laughs> so <clears throat> if we go to the website, type in internal, we can see that it is the upload page. Okay. So we can go ahead and turn this off since we already know what we were looking for. Um, we don't need it to continue to run anyways. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Okay. So we're going to go back here and now we're going to do uh, compromise the web server. It says, now you have found a form to upload files. So you can leverage this to upload and execute our payload that will lead to compromising the web server. Okay, so we know that the web server is a PHP and not HTML. Most websites, they have it to where, excuse me, they protect their web server, preventing people from uploading, you know, PHP, ASP, you know, certain files that could compromise their server. Sometimes they mess up and see PHP has different type of PHP formats. You got PHP, PHP 3, PHP 4, PHP 5, and then PHTML and so on. Okay, and sometimes then they miss you know, part of their security or whatever, the protection, sometimes you can always, you know, sneak in a different format of PHP and compromise the system. Okay, so try to identify which extensions are not blocked. We're going to fuzz the upload form. To do this, we're going to use Burp Suite. If you are unsure how to use Burp Suite, just go ahead and Click on this and I'll take you to the Burp Suite room and you can learn how to use Burp Suite. But we're not going to use Burp Suite. I'm going to use a Python script. So I'm going to write out a Python script and um, have do this automated. So before doing that, as you can see, as we continue to go, it says we're going to use Intruder used for automating customized attacks we would begin make a word list with the following extensions and php ph3 ph4 ph5 and phtml now once now make sure boot suite is configured to intercept all your browser traffic upload a file once it's success is captured send it to intruder click payloads and then select sniper attack type and then click the position tab now find the file name and then add ss to the extension okay so it i don't know actually what this is but it looks like an s i know it's not an s it should look like so so as you can see right here they got shows.php and they got these two little s's whatever they are right here <clears throat> okay so so right here, I decided to 
Um, you get a reverse shell, PHP script. Now, if you need, there's a lot of reverse PHP sh shells out there on GitHub. There's pen tester monkey. I mean, you can get a lot. But Kali Linux comes pre-installed with web shells. So if you type in web shells on your terminal, it will give you a, it will take you straight to the directory on user share web shells. You got ASP, ASPX, CFM, JSP, Perl, and then PHP. Okay, so you can just go CD into PHP, and then as you can see, you got different PHP um, shells. You got simple backdoor PHP, you got PHP reverse shell, find socket, PHP backdoor, QSD, PHP backdoor, and so on. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead. CFT, try out the new Vulcan Vulversity, and then we're going to go here. Now, I already have the reverse PHP shell right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is type a config. I'm going to get my IP address right here, clear the room, I mean terminal. And then I'm going to go ahead and... up there's only a couple things we got to change and change the IP address okay and then leave port as 999 save the file make it out Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to test this out. We're going to upload this into the browser and you're going to see for yourself that it will not allow it. But if you change the extension, which you see, extension not allowed. Okay, so it won't allow PHP. We come here and we just type in PHP because that's what it's asking us. Try to upload a few file types to the server with common extension seems to be blocked. Well, PHP is blocked. But we can try all these other extensions right here and see if we can get it in. So let's go ahead and make a Python script to do that. We're going to go ahead and call it res.5. It's cold in this hotel room. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and do user. Then environments Python. I'm going to go ahead and import request. And then we're going to import OS. All right. So first thing we want to do is need to create a IP variable. We have an IP. And then URL, we're going to use an F string. Okay, so we're going to do F and then HTTP and three brackets IP on port one, two, three, four, five, oh, one, two, three, four. Internal index. I believe it's index dot PHP so yeah index dot PHP so using the F string it's basically using this F string it's gonna take this IP and use the variable IP and just place it in Okay. After we do that, we 
need to create a old file name. Um, I'm gonna call it Dev Shell at PHP. The reason why we're doing that is because every time it changes the extension, we gotta make sure that it realizes that this is the old version. And then we're going to do a new file name. We're just going to keep changing it to each extension. So before doing that, we got to do, what is it? And create a request to upload files. We'll just call this file name is equal to dev shell and then extensions is equal to Actually, right. so it's going to be dot PHP dot PHP three. Move that out of the way so you guys can see. Four. And then we're going to do four extension and extensions. We need to create a new file name. New file name is equal to file name plus extension. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna create a new file name and then give it file name plus the extension. As you can see right here, file name, you have the variable file name up here. So it's gonna create a new file name, call it rev shell and then plus a different extension, which is gonna be right here. All right, and then we are going to need to rename. So we need OS main, uh, rename actually. Then we're going to need old, old file name, new file name, and that should be good for that. And then we need files. And yeah, files is equal to file. Now what this is going now we're doing right now is we are creating a return a response object so this is one of the ways to have the file uploaded onto the web website we're doing a call for that um, so open New file name RP Okay, and then we need to return the request object. 
So this first one right here is we're pretty much specifying a file to upload. Okay. The second thing that we're going to do is we need to return a default object. So we do R is equal to request. dot post URL and then files is equal to files and then we need an if statement so if okay extensions say extension not allowed then in our text and then else print actually We need to print, I forgot to print, upstream. Not allowed. So right now what it's doing is whenever it uploads a file, if it gets the warning extension not allowed, then it's going to print back to us that that extension, one of these extensions is not allowed. Then we're going to do like an else if statement saying if it is allowed, then print definitely allowed. So, so it's going to be print. So it's going to pretty much say print extension not allowed. And then we do else, if else, you know, print extension is allowed. And then and then old element is equal to old. Uh, no, new file name. And that should be it. Let's test it out real quick. All right. So we got to use Python three for this. So buzz. So let's double check this real quick. Again, give me one second. Just double check, make sure. So, alright, we got IP 10.9. Let's double check, make sure it's the right IP. I wonder why I put my wrong IP, wrong IP. Okay. Why the heck did I do that? Okay. I've only 
had like four hours of sleep for the night and day. The scores now. That. There we go. So we got it working. Awesome. Just a little trial and error. <laughs> okay, so we know that PHTML is allowed. And the cool thing about. Excuse me, I'm drinking Coke. And, the cool thing about it is, is that after running the script, it will automatically change the reverse shell to the proper one that it uses. Okay. So now that we got that working, then we can go on and hit complete. Go to that. All right, and then Run this attack, but extension is allowed, and then you know, as you saw, it's .phtml. So we can go ahead and hit complete. Okay, now we know what extensions we can use for our payload. We can plug it up. So we're going to use our PHP reverse shell as our payload. Reverse shell works by being called on the remote host and forcing this host to make a connection to you. So you'll listen for incoming connection, upload, and have your shell connected. No, shell executed, which will beacon out to you to control. So download the following reverse PHP shell. Like I said, they already provide that for you guys. So when you get to this part, you can just follow along exactly what they're telling you to use. Right. And the one thing we need to do is we need to set a connection. So we're going to use sublime and then connect dot sh. Okay, so we're going to start. Okay. Yeah, we've done dash to set a little script. We'll do nc dot L N D P nine 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 nine. That's good. All right, and we'll just go ahead and save this. And we can just go ahead and schmod it. And then we can run it. Let me just administrate run. Okay, so it does run. All right, we go ahead and split the screen. So we can run that script. Alright. Now that we got that, we can go ahead and upload our PHP reverse shell. Success. All right. And then we can go back here and it tells you to upload your show and navigate to HTTP, the IP, the port, internal uploads, and then PHP reverse shell. So it's going to be internal. We can go ahead and type in uploads. And then grab shell dot html. Make sure I did that right. And internal uploads. All right, we should get a connection. As you can see, we got our connection. So we are now going to do is who am I? We are www-data. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. 
Now there's a few things we want to do. We want it to, because this is kind of an unstable shell. So we got to do a few things first. So we'll type in price on tax C. Spawn. Okay. Um, again, dash. Um, that should work. There we go. And then we want to export. Actually, before doing that, we need to background it. We need to do STTY raw at echo. Okay, and then basically what that's going to do is make it to where you can use the tab function, tab autocomplete. All right, and then we hit FG. All right, and now we want to export. Export. <clears throat> Term equals external. All right, that is going to make it to where we can type in clear. Okay, so now we have a shell, a stable shell. And let's see what our next step is. So, it's asking us what user was running the web server. Okay, so now we gotta look for a user. <coughs> Best thing to do is to cat the FD object is really an object is FD dot cat WD um, Bill. So we know Bill is the user. Let's just let's submit. Got the answer right. Now what is the user Bill's flag? So what we want to do is cd into home. Actually, right, cd into home. Bill. Check it. Right, here's the user flag. Let's go ahead and cut that out. Copy. Paste. Submit. Now that we've completed that and that, we can move on to task five, which is privilege escalation. Okay, so now you have compromised this machine. We are going to escalate our privileges and become your super user in Linux. The SUID, which stands for Set Owner User ID, upon execution is a special type of file permission given to a file. The SUID gives temporary permission to a user to run the program slash file with permission of the file owner rather than the user who runs it. For example, the binary file to change your password has the SUID bit set on it, user bin, pass WD. This is because to change your password, it would need to write to the shadowers file that you do not have access to, but root does. So it has root privileges to make the file change. Now, when it comes to this, it's asking us on the system, search for all SUID files, what files stand out? Okay. So if you don't know what to do, you just hit the hint button and it says use the command find slash forward slash user root m400 and then basically it's right this whole thing so as an example we'll go ahead and try that out okay let's go ahead and get rid of this so you guys can be able to see so we'll do fine. We'll just do what it's saying to use. 
Alright, read your root slash term four thousand slash four thousand. Okay, exec and we need to ls slash ld v Now, let's see. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to look for something that shouldn't be normal in the set as the set UID file, okay? And as you can see, there's an S right here for like I mentioned three, like I mentioned right here. Okay, um, so this is SUID and this is user. So we can go ahead and figure it out just by looking at these right here that system CTO should not be in the set SUID. I mean the set UID. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can use GTFO bins. Okay. to find a way to exploit the SUID for the system CTL. So we do system, as you can see it's right here, hit the SUID and we can use this right here. Now we're gonna need to change a few things out of this, okay? And it's really simple to run this really easy first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and open up a new file I'm just going to go ahead and paste all this in right here and change a few things okay so basically if we do sudo tech uh, we can see that we have to enter a password which we don't know okay so we can't actually figure out exactly what we can use for sudo. And as far as bash, okay, we can use. So basically it runs with the SUID bit set and may be exploited to access the file system exploit or maintain access with elevated privileges working as a SUID backdoor. If it is used to run sh tag p, omit the tag p argument on system like Debian that allows the default sh shell to run with the SUID. This example creates a local SUID copy of the binary and runs it to maintain elevated Evaluated privileges to exploit an existing SUID binary. Okay, we don't technically need to use this right here, but the only thing we can use is this right here. So that's what we can do. All right, so the first thing we want to change is this right here. We don't want it to call out for an ID. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to use bin bash. Actually, we wanted to change bin bash into an SUID. All right, so shmon, and then s, and then bin bash. Okay. After we do that, we want system CTO to run in the bin. Okay, we'll just do bin. And that should work right here. And the moment we use dash tag P, we should get a All right, and then we just run bash tag P. And who am I? We are root, as you guys can see. So we need to go back 
to root. I find that root file. Oops. And now we got root. So we just escalated this and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little long. I'm going to try to edit most of this out to shorten it out. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We've actually just finished this. We have fully completed, actually. It's going to be... Um, Oh, first we'll delete this. And then we put the root flag in there. And we are completed. Congratulations. So that's it for Vonversity. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button, subscribe, and share. Have a great day.